artists can definitely have a better chance today, you know, making a living and being independent. I, I have other friends who are, you know, making a living from just being independent artists. Do this stuff in the 80s and 90s, good luck, you know? He makes music for the future. He's been fe featured on Spotify's Fresh Finds playlist. And you may know him from his songs, See or Fine, All Right. Please welcome Astrail to the podcast. How are you doing today? Doing good. Uh, thanks for having me, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much for coming on. Excited to have this talk with you, learn a bit more about, you know, your music, your story, everything like that. So first question, just to get into it, what was your first experience with music like or what made you want to start making your own music? um oh man it was a long long time ago I was probably like it's probably like 2011 I was nine years old around that time um and I guess what started it was because beforehand I used to have like guitar lessons but then like at the time I wasn't really interested that was like when I was a little bit younger and then like when I was nine I was like really into like you know because like during that phase is when like you know, you had Madian and Skrillex and stuff and all those guys, they were kind of like, you know, um, you know, becoming more present. And I was really into, you know, like messing with like MIDI drum pads and stuff. So um, I got this like, it's like a machine micro um, that was made by Native Instruments. And I, and I would just like mess with like all the drum, um, the drum kits in the software. And um yeah, I would just, just mess around with that. And I would also, before before that, I was, like, messing with GarageBand, too, just messing with all, like, the, the sample libraries that they had, the stock yeah. samples. Um, But, yeah, I mean, I guess, like, when I got the jump head, it was, like, pretty much a chain reaction from there. I started messing with FL Studio um, and then started producing uh, for the most part. And then... um. I mostly just made electronic music from then on. And then, you know, around like 20, 2018, I, um, 2016, I started my Astro project. And then like, you know, I had some other project before then that were just like, you know, during my amateur phases, I would say. And so Astro started in 2016 and fast forward to like 2018, 2019, I started like changing the focus of the music from, electronic to like more um pop oriented and um i kind of just like did a whole revamp uh, of astral just rebranding everything and yeah i mean i guess i i started the rebrand with releasing cyberline and then i had oral come out um a bit after that and i'm here now yeah and so was there any sort of like one thing that prompted that change from electronic to pop or was it just sort of you just like growing and naturally changing your sound I think it was more just me growing um I honestly like you know had a very large cult with my old music um and you know I I still you know interact with them a lot Mm -hmm. um I think I think ultimately was just like I, I just grew out of it and I wanted to try something new um and to me I think it was a good idea because I get it's you know the style of music I make now is definitely something I really enjoy um and it, it feels a lot you know in my in my comfort zone with you know just how I write in general so mm -hmm. yeah yeah, and like I, I was trying to like learn more about you, research you a bit leading up to this. And one thing that I saw like coming up all over the place was the fact that you say you make music for the future. What does that mean to you? Where did that phrase come from? Um, uh, anything like that? So yeah, I mean, I it's obviously just like my little motto thing. Um, I guess you know, just not even like what people think like sounds futuristic it's more just like you know making sounds that like people are going to you know i guess resonate with and remember um and also 
just like timeless music, I guess, you know, things that aren't going to, um, you know, have their phase where they just kind of mm -hmm. like, they kind of glow and then they just, they die out, you know, a couple years later. Um, I guess I just, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's, that's pretty much that, yeah. Are you a music artist trying to find a way to get your music on as many streaming platforms as possible? Then check out DistroKid. DistroKid is a super user-friendly and super easy-to-use service that will make your music available in stores like Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, Amazon Music, YouTube, Snapchat, everything. Everything you could imagine is available. People will even be able to add your songs into their Instagram stories. DistroKid helps you with the distribution, monetization, and promotion of all of your music. Use the link in the description of this video for 7% off any DistroKid package you want. Pick from musician packages designed to help artists get their own music out there, or even get a label package where you can manage up to 100 artists from one profile. So that's more for like managers, labels, and you can also get the musician package that I mentioned earlier, which is more for artists, producers, things like that. And it's super easy, and you can get 7% off any package right now with the link in the description of this video. So once again, if you're looking for a way to get your music on as many streaming platforms as possible, I'm talking any platform you can think of, get DistroKid and get 7% off right now with the link in the description back to the program once you like you said started playing around with those uh drum kits was it sort of music from there or was there anything else you thought about maybe doing um in terms of in terms of just uh, like career going on in life like any other uh jobs or professions you wanted or was it just sort of music from the start um that for me, I feel like my vision was not very solidified back then. So I was just kind of doing whatever I yeah. felt. Yeah. Um, but I guess like, you know, when, when I switched my genres and music that I make, it was definitely a turning point for me because, um, you know, that's when I like started to learn how to sing and stuff. Um, I felt like it was a, st it was a point where I was learning how to, actually be an artist um not that i never was i just like i think there's a lot of more responsibility when you're making you know um pop music because it's it's a lot more genuine um you know it, it it's most of it is just it's, it's just you and yeah um that's pretty much you know kind of how i yeah. went from there and i mean like you've clearly through different projects been making music for a while and you've tried out different sounds and whatnot uh, on top of that is there any like tips or advice you would give to uh, like new artists who are just starting to release music um i would say ex just don't make things that you think you should be making make things that you feel like you want to make if that makes sense like yeah i feel it like everybody's out. yeah i feel like when when a lot of artists because like i do lessons too and like what i find is people some people seem to be very and like i used to be like this just so focused on one thing to make and I guess I was like that too. I mean, I, when I grew out of it, I guess like, you know, just making electronic music still like gave me some ability to like adapt to other genres a lot more easily. But I feel like your, your best results are just messing around with everything and trying things that you've never tried before, because you might find, you might find your sweet spot earlier than I did. And I definitely think, you know, I, I would have, done a lot more with the the music i'm doing now if i realized that earlier but yeah i mean just don't limit yourself to to you know i need to make a 
you know, this genre, you know, because it, it's it's gonna doing doing so will ultimately, you know, expand your horizons and realize who you can really be. Um so yeah, just don't limit yourself. Yeah, yeah. And you know, through like all the different projects eventually you landed on Australia. How did you get that name? Where did it uh, come from? Uh, just like at the start of the project. Um, I wish I wish I wish I had a story, but I just have no clue. Off, off I just, came up, just came up with it. Yeah, it. yeah. I I um, I had some thoughts of like, should I change my name? I was like, it's just a name. It's just yeah. a name. Yeah that's really it you know so yeah. and you know through like music a lot of people can find that making music especially like as an independent artist can be hard and they might think about uh you know taking a break or like getting a job on the side was there any moment that maybe you thought about like taking a break or quitting music or like that or have you just uh stuck to it and wanted to keep going Never have I thought I would need to take a break because I obviously enjoy doing it. But, mm -hmm. you know, even now I'm in a position where like, you know, I, I need to have some sort of backup um, yeah. or just, you know, alternative ways of, you know, making money from music and stuff. Like I, I do like mixing and mastering for some people. So, you know, um, I do commissions through there. But yeah, I mean, it's, you know, un until until you make it it's you know my dad always told me like until you make it, it's a hobby so yeah and it seems great that you know you still have to get money from other places and whatnot but you found a yeah. way to still keep yourself like doing what you love which is music so like you said mixing mastering um and like i saw while preparing for this that you do lessons for like production and whatnot so it's great that you sort of have another job get money from it but you're keeping yourself within yeah. the music industry and uh yeah in what you love yeah and so um just in in life whether it's a person like in your family or like another artist musically is there anyone that's really inspired you oh man i i i feel like Cause like I, I I get I get inspiration from people, from individual people on different levels. So I can't like put my finger on one person. Yeah. Um. Like, cause like I you know I I have like there are people that like I kind of like you know I like what they're doing, but there's also um, other people that are like you know I I really like their music. So I guess like inspiration is a very like it's a very wide spectrum in terms of, you know, what, what about it is like inspires. Um, what about someone like that inspires you? So I don't know. I, I really don't know. Yeah. And just sort of I mean, I mean, I know I'm all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know back in the old day, like I would have what I call inspirations, but I feel like it was just more just like, you know, what I look to, what I look up to like musically, but um, I can't say I have like an it like an inspiration for someone as like an individual. Mm -hmm. I think I just I kind of look at what everyone's doing and just kind of like take them as data points and just gain awareness, and then I just kind of synthesize the info and just like be like, you know put myself in the context of everything and just kind of like okay you know what what should i what seems right for me or you know what 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 yeah i guess yeah what what seems right for me and you know i'm, I'm not really too focused on like inspirations and stuff um with yeah. in terms of like who they are as individuals but yeah mm -hmm. and now like with music a lot of artists seem to you know they get popular from tiktok or they have a single that like gets a lot of radio play and that sort of launches their career whereas in the past 
it was like almost a necess necessity to have a label. How do you feel about like just music in general becoming more independent and more accessible? Um, I think it, I think it's great. Um, I mean, definitely today, like there's there's a way more um, there's way more artists releasing music today than there were, you know, decades ago. So, you know, the, the, the market has definitely changed, but um, I don't think, you know, the ability to uh, be successful with music has changed at all. If anything, I think it's definitely gotten better. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm independent myself too. So um, I, I definitely think it's, it's a good thing because, you know, I, I have other friends who are you know, making a living from just being independent artists, which, yeah. you know, is something you would never be able to do. Um, you know, let's say, I mean, I mean, it's a long time ago, but like, you know, yeah, do this stuff, do this stuff, do this stuff in the eighties and nineties. Good luck. You know, it's yeah. definitely, you know, artists can definitely have a better chance today, you know, making a living and being independent. But, um, you know, I, I think, I think, you know, the right label deals are, you know, as beneficial, if not more. Um, but yeah, definitely being independent is a lot more easier today. Yeah, definitely. And I, I, I get what you're saying that like, it's not necessarily all labels are bad. It's just that now, you know, you got to yeah. be very careful with like choosing the right label and making sure. Yeah, it all depends on the deal like, in the end, you know? Yeah, it all depends on the deal in the end. And, you know, it, it is it is business. So yeah. And um, for you, like when you're coming up with a new song, maybe it looked different for different projects, but what does your creative process look like? Is there any like one way you go about making a song or does it sort of just take shape however it takes shape? Um, usually I have a same way that I go about making music where I start is just like, I just come up with the sound and I build upon that. I don't focus too much on the, I guess, the the very nitpicky stuff. I always want to get the ideas down as quick as possible. So then I can go back to it and be like, okay, well, now I can focus on the more specific stuff. But I mean, I'm, it's always just me doodling on my piano or guitar and then like I, I think i think I, i'm really driven by just melodies and just chord uh i guess chord progressions so i just start from there for most of the time and then i just build upon that really mm -hmm. and so do you have any like classical training or like uh i guess piano or guitar lessons or are you just self-taught in all these instruments mm -hmm. No, I pretty much just self-taught. Yeah, that's that's awesome. And so, um, I guess like for for your own music, is there any song that sort of defied your expectation, or like maybe, for example, you were putting out a song and you either like thought it was gonna do really well and it didn't, or you put out a song sort of like yeah, whatever, I'll put it out and it like did uh much better than you thought. Um. Yeah, I I mean I I there's times you know I thought like, you know the other way around too where I thought you know oh this is this is probably gonna do great and you know didn't do the best but, yeah. um, yeah I mean I I'm pretty sure like I guess C is a good example like I mean I knew it was gonna be a good song um because I was really happy with in the end uh, before I released it, um. But yeah, I mean, what what's what's cool about that is that song, like it was so easy to make, and um, yeah, I I I knew it was gonna you know be successful, but I I didn't know how successful. But now it's like the top one on my page as of today. But um, you know, I, I feel like there's there's no way most of the time there's no way you can tell if a song is going to be you know, your best in terms of, you know, um, what the audience thinks, but, um, 
I, I feel like you could have good rough ideas. Um, yeah. yeah. And I guess that that's kind that's kind of what leads me to like make decisions on what kind of music I should put in like albums and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, most of the time though, it's it's always unexpected. Yeah, and um, I guess for Israel, this current project you're working on, is there? Mm-hmm any song you've released that you think short sort of like shows off what this project meant to be or meant to sound like sort of a song that shows like yeah this is what Australia is what Australia sounds like um I think I don't think there's a single song that I have just like felt like yeah this is what Australia sounds like I think what I what I sound like is just all the music I've released, you know, I, I think, I think people will learn to understand when they listen to more of your music that like, okay, I see, I see where, where he's going. So, um, yeah, but I'm never like working on one song or release one song. And I'm just like, yeah, this is what Australia sounds like because, um, I, I definitely think, you know, I have a sound, but it's not, you know, it's not like a singular thing. Um, there's definitely it, it's 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 just the it's more about the the character that you experience when you're listening to my music, I guess. Mm-hmm. And so, like, we we've brought it up before, but you've had multiple different projects, uh, and like this mm-hmm. this current one, Australia. Is, do you think? Australia is one that you're sort of going to stick with for a while, or do you think there are future projects that you're going to work on down the road? Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, Australia is going to be, you know, my, my wheelhouse, but, um, you know, I, I, I moved a lot of like the old Australia releases to a project that I called Orlin. And basically those are just, you know, all the stuff that I didn't want branded on Australia anymore um so i've thought about you know kind of like doing some stuff for orlin still since i don't want to just like have it be a a throwaway project but um yeah i mean that's yeah a trail is going to be you know something i'm going to be doing for a long time so it's going to be my it's always going to be my main project um like it's always been so yeah Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I guess like go with Australia, uh, if you got this like opportunity to make a song or collaborate with any artist, who would you want to collaborate with? Maybe it's uh, just because you're a fan. Maybe it's because you think like you would sound really good together. Just what artist would you want to make a song with? Um, definitely Holly Humberstone. Um. They she makes amazing music. Um, with uh, Rob Milton uh, does all of her production stuff. But yeah, they 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 just dominate. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, you know I have others too. Um, but yeah, that's probably you know my main ones that I would want to collaborate with. Yeah, yeah, and just in terms of like your taste in music or like your uh listening preferences do you have sort of like favorite bands or artists that you really like oh yeah of course you know like obviously i've heard her and then um you know 1975 i'll listen to some break-ins and you know i'll I'll jump around to uh I I have to look at my Spotify too, but I'll, I'll I mean I'm mostly just call all kinds of stuff, but you know um yeah um James Ivy nice yeah. um yeah I'll, yeah just like all all over the place <laughs> yeah and so, yeah for the most part yeah and uh I guess like it it may be hard to choose so feel free to like not have an answer but is there a song of yours that's your favorite uh 
Um, I think I think most of the time it's the song that I'm about to release, or you know, mm-hmm. my most recent song. But it, like it changes so much. Like even tomorrow, like I can have a different opinion. So, um. But I think as an artist, though, your your favorite song is always going to be the one that you're you're going to release or that you just finished, yeah. um, because you know you 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 wouldn't finish a song if it if it was something you didn't like. Um, yeah, if it's something you weren't excited about. Yeah, so I I think you know the, your favorite song is always going to be your newest song, and when you when you keep track of my releases, you know that's pretty self-explanatory when you have that in mind so yeah, yeah. your most re- my most recent song will be um my favorite yeah and your your most recent song now lost my mind is there any like story behind that if there's any uh message i guess within the song just tell us more about that release yeah so um i don't know how much i want to uh get into the story yeah uh, just for the sake fine. of not that's wanting fine. not wanting to sabotage myself anymore but um I, I do so like i on um a lot of my music i i write with my my friend who is an amazing writer um he doesn't do music mainly he he mostly like has jobs at like fintech companies and writes like articles and stuff but he's a he's really good with words and um his name's Noah, Noah Widener. And, you know, we, we write a lot of music together. Um, and he helps me out with a lot of lyrics. So on that song in particular, he helped me out with all the lyrics. And, um, you know, I, I told him, you know, what, what the story was and everything. And like, he, he, he couldn't have, I mean, he did it better than any, like I could have. So yeah, yeah. he yeah. just, I, I gave him a story and then he just wrote it wrote it all out into lyrics and like it was just it, it, it was perfect so um yeah yeah and now like going forward what sort of uh i mean feel free to share whatever you want but what's next for you what's if you have any upcoming projects like that anything that's coming down the pipeline yeah i mean i guess i could say this now i mean i do have a body of work coming um probably in the next few months um with these singles I've been rolling out. So definitely stay tuned for that. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think, I think my, I want to pull away from just releasing big bodies of work and more focusing on, you know, getting uh, attraction to um, uh, songs one by one. Mm-hmm. Um, and just, yeah, focus on that a little bit more this year. But yeah, um, definitely expect a lot more singles. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll be looking forward to that full length project and any singles coming up. Um, those are all the questions I had for you today. So thank you again so okay. much for coming on. Feel free to, of course. you know, shout out, promote anything you want, wherever people can find you. Yeah, just, you can find me on anywhere. Just look me up, Astro, A-S-T-R-A-L-E and yeah um follow me on instagram twitter um astro music so yeah yeah well thank you again for coming on and i'll leave a link to that some of that down below of course cool cool all right appreciate it man thank you